This is the celestial sphere. Um, the earth is in the center. The earth is round. The sun is round. The moon is round. The stars are round. Gravity makes things round. Ground, gravity is a central force. When we look out into the void, we see the stars surrounding the earth. We see the planets surrounding the earth, although they're found in a band called the ecliptic, where the sun is also found. But the moon is also found. The Milky Way, though, is not found there at all. It's at a totally different angle. Um, the Earth appears, the Earth relative to the stars rotates once a day. 24 hours relative to the sun on average, 23 hours, 56 minutes and four and a half seconds relative to the stars. Because as the earth turns around, we also go around the sun, right? Or the earth appears, the earth's orbit is along the ecliptic, right? which is also represented on here. This is the horizon. This is the north point on the horizon. This is the east point on the horizon. This is the west, the south point on the horizon. This is the west point on the horizon. This is the plane of the horizon. In the one that we build, we're going to have something very similar. We have a north point at zero degrees and also 360 degrees, east at 90 degrees, south at 180 degrees and west at 270. This is the horizon. We live on the earth. It appears like that this ball rotates once a day around us. So, and This is a celestial sphere. We're going to mark our celestial sphere. We're going to understand the three coordinate systems that are in the ball and the one coordinate system which is in the box. The zenith is up, the nadar is down. This is the azimuth coordinates, 0 and 360, 90, 180, 270, and up and down. Negative altitude means you can't see it unless you can see through the dirt because it's below the horizon. So in this model, this hoop is the horizon. If we go where we are, we're, half, we're part way between the equator and the poles. At the poles, the rotation axis, the North Pole, is at the same place the zenith is overhead, and we can see half of the stars all of the time. At the South Pole, we see the other half of the stars all of the time. Also at the poles, we only see the sun half of the time. At the equator, we can see all of the stars, half of the, all of the stars, of course the North and South Pole are on the in the dirt. But we are, your latitude is the angle on the earth is the angle between the north celestial pole and the north point. Um, and it, as the earth rotates once a day. Remember there are two, two major types of days, a solar day and a sidereal or star day. Um, all the stars are on here, so this tells where to look to find them. Their positions do change though, slowly, because they're moving and they're moving. These stars are in the galaxy, they're moving around the galaxy. Our own sun takes 250 million years roughly to go around the galaxy. Um, so everything is in motion, nothing is still. Um, the moon goes around us, we have 13 lunations a year. 
it goes on, it's only five degrees away from the ecliptic. It's what helps cause our eclipses when they, when they are at the same place in the sky as seen from the earth. The celestial sphere contains all of this information until we could actually measure the distances to the stars first in the 1840s. Before that, we just had a ball of direction. When we saw two stars, uh, we just knew where they were up in the sky. We didn't necessarily know how far away they were. In fact, it was very hard to determine. It's very hard to see the ecliptic on this map and the pole of the ecliptic, but it's very easy to see the poles of the ecliptic on the one that you make because we can see the poles of the Earth, the North and South Poles. Here we can see the ecliptic in a 23 and a half degree angle. Just as the equator has a pole, the ecliptics have a pole, and that's called the pole of the ecliptic. And it's 23 and a half degrees with respect to the North and South Pole. The pole, the North and South Pole wander around. That's called precession. That takes about 26,000 years, 26,200 years because the sun is also rotating and the moon's going around us, that applies a torque on the earth and that causes the earth's rotation axis to precession around the 26,000 year period. That's one on a Leo Leo and not a Virgo because I'm not 2,000 years old. Uh, during the time of Jesus there was no North Star from the time of Abraham there was, it was Alpha Draconis or Thuban. Right now it's the, our pole star is called Polaris. Uh, and in about 12 or 13,000 years it'll be Vega. It is actually a star that gets overhead here uh, now, although it won't get overhead then at this latitude. So the Earth is also a spherical coordinate system. Alright? We have a longitude that goes all the way around in a latitude. Traditionally to measure the latitude from the equator. Zero is on the equator. The North Pole is 90, either 90 plus or 90 north. The South Pole is negative or, ne or, or 90 south. We live at 38, 58 latitude and longitude is 77 degrees west of Greenwich, England because the English had a kick-ass navy in the uh, two centuries ago. Uh, and we use these coordinates to find everything. The most common coordinates used to find things with a telescope are the right ascension and declination. The right ascension is measured from the vernal equinox, the first day of spring. And there the equatorial coordinate is zero, and there's 24 hours all the way around. So zero hours, right ascension, zero hours, declination, because it's on the equator. The first day of summer would be six hours, right ascension, and 23 and a half degrees north, or 20 plus 23. The first day of autumn would be at 12 hours, right ascension, um, zero degrees declination and then the first day of winter is at 12 hours right ascension and minus 23 and a half degrees approximately or 23 and a half degrees south and in the winter time the sun is really low in the sky and it rises very far south of east and it sets very far south of west. Likewise, in the summertime, the sun will rise north of east and set north of west. That's what causes our seasons and causes our days to be long in the summertime and short in the winter. It has nothing to do with the ellipticity of the Earth's orbit. We're actually closest to the sun around January the 4th and farthest away around the 4th of July. All this can vary by a day because 
their 365.2422 days in a tropical or vernal year on average.